Today we're just going to talk about a quick tip for keeping your characters safe while they're trying to kill some enemy heavy hitters in close combat. Hello and welcome back to Warspex Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So 9th edition has made characters just a little bit more killable for multiple reasons, more targetable by heroic interventions, easier to draw a line of sight to them with the lookout sir rules being a bit more restrictive than the old character targeting rules, but also now when they tag a vehicle or monster in close combat, that vehicle or monster might still be able to shoot them if it has a big gun that doesn't have the blast special rule. Here's what I think is quite a reasonably common scenario. Say you've got a decently fighty close combat character charging into a gun platform alongside another unit, such as the Space Marine Captain and a unit of five scouts trying to engage this Riptide. After charge moves are made, we now have the character and the unit both in combat with the Riptide. The scouts didn't manage to do anything to try and get past that very thick armour that it has, but the Space Marine Captain's power fist took off a mighty four wounds. Some good damage there, it would have been a shame not to charge and not to have it, but it's hardly going to bring this Xenos technological terror down. In the Tau player's next phase, now the Riptide's fly won't allow it to fall back and shoot, there's actually decent incentive to the Riptide just remaining in combat with those units and lighting up the enemy with its own guns. In this case it just chose to fire that massive heavy burst cannon at the Space Marine Captain, who rather unfortunately just died to the sheer amount of the hail of shots. Not exactly the most optimal scenario for the Space Marines. However, this could have potentially been avoided if we just positioned them just a little bit differently. In this example, we've done the exact same charge move, except we've based the Riptide with three of the scouts. And the Space Marine Captain is within engagement range and fighting range of the Riptide, but he isn't actually in base contact. Just as before, we can do his damage, but we just deliberately don't move him into base contact. When the Riptide fights, it can't actually consolidate any closer, it has to end closer to the closest model. And as it is already in base contact with the closest model, it means that it isn't actually allowed to move at all, so it can't get any closer to the Space Marine Captain. This means that due to the character targeting rules with Lookout Sir, because the Space Marine Captain is within 3 inches of this 5-man scout unit, and also it isn't the closest model to the Riptide, it means that the Riptide actually can't target the Space Marine Captain with any of its heavy weapons. It now has the choice of dropping back and wasting all that firepower, and allowing something else to try and kill the Space Marine Captain with guns, or it's just going to have to target its weapons into the Space Marine Scouts and let the Captain have another round of close combat. Depending on what unit you're engaging and how tough your characters are, I think that this could potentially be a pretty handy trick for keeping a fighty character alive. There could potentially be a little bit of counterplay to this though, say for example if the Riptide isn't in base contact already. In this example, both the Space Marine Scouts and the Space Marine Captain have charged the Riptide. They're both within engagement range, but this time the Scouts haven't quite managed to make it within base to base. If the Space Marine player now fought with the Space Marine Captain first and did that damage, then it would give the Tau player a chance to interrupt. It is a fairly pricey option at two command points, but using that counter-offensive stratagem could potentially allow the Riptide to get the first move with the Consolidate and Pile-In moves, and even if he doesn't do any damage to either unit with his actual close combat attacks, at least in next turn he'll be in base-to-base -base with the Captain, so can potentially target him with his Burst Cannon if he wants to. Potentially could be quite powerful if your opponent is likely to inflict this on you, and of course if you're absolutely certain that you're not going to be just dropping back with the Riptide anyway, to allow the rest of the army to just fire into the units that it was in close combat with previously. So I know that this is at least slightly niche, but I think that it could be really quite powerful if it does make the difference between a character living or a character dying. Hope you've enjoyed the video, if you can think of any other similar little subtle tricks that you could play in 9th edition, then please let us know. I'm always interested in subjects for future videos like this. If you've enjoyed, then feel free to subscribe. We have regular 40k tactics and news content coming out pretty much every day. If you have been enjoying my content recently, I'd also like to mention that I have an Element Games affiliate link, which is down in the video description, which can be a way to help support the channel if you've been enjoying the content. Element is of course a discount retailer that ships to the UK and the rest of Europe. If you click on the link that's in the video description and then buy any Warhammer from the shop, then a small amount goes to help support Auspets Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. So it can potentially be a way to help the channel on Warhammer purchases that you were already thinking about making. I do have a similar link for Amazon in the USA and Canada. Again, that works in exactly the same way. Basically just click on that, make any Amazon order whatsoever. And again, a small amount goes to help support the channel if you were thinking about buying something anyway. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.